let us first look at the first statement the first statement tells me that the roots of the given equation are positive real and equal let these equal roots be equal to alpha therefore if i talk about the sum of the roots which is nothing but minus q by p it has to be equal to 2 alpha or i can say q has to be nothing but minus 2p alpha similarly if i talk about the product of the roots which is nothing but r by p it has to be equal to alpha square which implies that r has to be equal to p alpha square now let us look at the second part of the statement it says p plus q plus r is equal to the smallest possible non negative integer which is nothing but 1 so if p plus q plus r is 1 i can substitute the values of q and r which i have got earlier which means p plus p alpha square minus 2p alpha has to be 1 if i factorize this i get p into alpha minus 1 whole square has to be 1 now considering the fact that alpha and p both are integers therefore p and alpha minus 1 whole square also have to be integers and since alpha minus 1 whole square has to be a positive integer the only possible value is that p has to be 1 if p is 1 then the alpha minus 1 whole square also has to be 1 which can happen only when alpha is either 0 or 2 but since we are given that the roots of the equation are positive i have to discard 0 and therefore the only value which remains for alpha is 2 and for p is 1 the moment i know my alpha is 2 some of the roots has to be 2 alpha which is 4 therefore statement a is sufficient to answer the question now let's look at statement b statement b says r by p is equal to 2 now r by p is nothing but the product of the roots therefore it's nothing but alpha beta and if this is equal to 2 my choices for alpha beta are only 1 comma 2 or minus 1 comma minus 2 right uh the second thing it says is that the maxima of px square plus 2x plus r exists the maxima will exist for a quadratic if it is a downward parabola and the condition for downward parabola is simply that coefficient of x square should be negative therefore the only thing i get from here is that p is negative that does not lead me anywhere i still have two possible sums which are 3 and minus 3 hence i cannot conclude anything from statement b anything for sure while from statement a i could get the sum of the roots hence the correct answer is 